Our ultimate goal in Syria is to defeat ISIS and to achieve long-term political stability in the country. Defeating ISIS requires defeating Assad, but we have to make sure that his regime is not replaced by something as bad or worse. The last thing we need in Syria is a repeat of Libya with its planless aftermath, where the end of a dictatorship was only the beginning of more terrorist violence, including the death of four Americans in Benghazi. <laughs> Syria will need a stable government, and a transition free of more sectarian bloodletting will depend on the credible moderate forces we help to unite and build up today. To that end, my strategy would be to bring American influence to bear in four important areas of action. First, a coordinated international effort is essential to give Syria's moderate forces the upper hand. As it is, the Qataris, the Turks, the Saudis, and others have been supporting fighting groups in Syria. But these groups are not always working to common purpose. And if there's anything that moderate forces in Syria cannot afford right now, it's confusion and disunity. Under my strategy, the aim would be to draw the moderates together and back them up as one force. And we should back that force up all the way through, not just in taking the fight to the enemy, but in helping them form a stable, moderate government once ISIS is defeated and Assad is gone. It is a tough, complicated diplomatic and military proposition, even more so than the current situation in Iraq. But it can be done. We saw in the Iraq surge how Islamic moderates can be pulled away from extremist forces. And the strategic elements in both cases are the same. We have to support local forces, and we must stay true to our word. Second, we have to expand and vastly improve the recruitment and training of Syrian forces fighting ISIS. At the moment, too many in Syria doubt that they can count on us, which explains why our recruiting and training have basically come to nothing. We've, we've spent a half a billion dollars on a program that has gotten us 54 recruits. When that happens, you know that the plan's not working out really well. I'm tempted to be reminded of healthcare.gov. It cost a little bit more and got the same result. The website. Just saying. The reality is our recruitment efforts have been failing in Syria because we're not respected anymore as a reliable actor in the region. And we have to change that impression with the clear, consistent, and credible action that every nation should expect from the United States of America. Third, we must over time establish multiple safe zones in Syria. It's a measure of progress that we've joined with the Turks to create a small ISIS free zone in the northern part of the country. That's good news. But we need to go beyond, well beyond that, by establishing safe zones to protect Syrians, not only from ISIS, but also from Assad. Fourth, we and our partners should declare a no-fly zone in Syria, and then work to expand that zone to prevent more crimes by the regime. Enforce that no-fly zone, and we'll stop the regime's bombing raids that kill helpless citizens. It could also help stop Iranian flights from resupplying the regime and Hezbollah and other bad actors. A no-fly zone is a critical strategic step to cut off Assad, counter Iranian influence, keep the pressure on for a settlement, and prevent more needless death in a country that has seen so much of it. When we talk about no-fly zones in Syria, precision airstrikes in Iraq, or any projection of military power to meet or deter threats, all of this assumes that such power is there when we need it. Yet here as well, the short-sightedness of the present administration will leave a cost. We're in the seventh year of a significant dismantling of our own military, in almost inverse proportion to the threats that are multiplying. I assure you, the day that I'm elected President of the United States will be the day that we turn this around and re be re begin rebuilding the armed forces of the United States of America. A winning strategy against the Islamic State or against any threat to ourselves and our friends depends ultimately on the military strength that underwrites American influence. Let that slip away, and what would America be in the world affairs 
except one more well-intentioned voice at the United Nations. We don't want that. In any event, of any effort of ours to overcome violence and secure peace, a winning strategy depends on maintaining unequal strength, and we can never take it for granted.